Let me introduce you to my little friend. Okay, so what I've done is uh, just done a vertical cut here. And I'm going to break the wire here with a special connector. And then mount the core drill. It mounts to this sliding bar right here. So I'll get the core drill mounted and uh, bring it back. So this is how the core drill mounts. See this uh, bar under here? just slides in and out so I can adjust it further or closer to the stone and this is the Hilti core drill frame I guess you'd call it so there's the drill what I've done is I've just traced a uh, circle around where the drill hits and now I'm going to measure the offset between here and the center of this hole. And that'll give me the offset of uh, the core drill. And I can program that in as a tool in Commotion CNC. And I should be, hopefully, all set. Okay, so my initial measurements here are got a quarter inch between uh, this side of the kerf and the outside of the drill. The drill was an inch and a half. So that gives me uh, one inch to the center plus half the kerf. My kerf is measured at 0.343 of an inch. Um, so I'll work that out and punch that into motion CNC for my X offset and then the uh, Y measured at an inch and a quarter from the bottom of here to here and then I'll have half my again another half my kerf uh, to add to that so I'll uh, go inside motion C and C and uh, enter that in for the offsets for this for the core drill so I have commotion C's D here open now I've gone to the tool setup I've entered my offsets for the core drill and then I've set up a little G code program to do a tool change. I've set uh, compensation on for the tool and then down here it's doing a tool change for that tool. So I'll run this and when I do you'll see that the X and Y DROs will change to compensate for that tool offset. There we go. And you can see, if you look at the DROs, they've changed to reposition back to the uh, wire tool, which has no offset. So it's going back to this position. So I just ran a C or starting to see a uh, G code program to do a tool change. And you can see here it uh, at least by eye, it looks like it's right in the center of of where the wire would be. So it's looking good for the core drill. 
So I have sheet cam open here and sheet cam is what I use to uh, generate the G code from the CAD drawing. So this is the cam software. Uh, sheet cam has a number of nice features for using it with the wire saw. Um, the first is that uh, you have full control over your uh, start points for inner contours and an inner, inner contour is see, uh, these, all these rectangles here. If this uh, red area was the stone, these would be called inner contours because you don't want any cuts between them. You're cutting out this part. So what sheet cam allows you to do is specify your lead-ins and your start points. I can go into here and I could edit my start points. I could stick this one here if I wanted them all vertical for a particular reason. I'm also able to go in and set out this distance here. And that's handy so I can use a different size core drill. I just have to change what my lead-in distance is based on the diameter of that core drill. And with sheet cam, you also have a fairly good control over the post processor. They allow you to edit the post processor and configure it for the way you need. So in my case, when I'm moving between this hole and this hole, I need to remove the wire manually. So what we do here is on pan up, if I'm moving from cutting out this shape to this shape, this says turn off the spindle and then it sends a custom M code, this one M100. And inside Commotion CNC, what I've done is set up M100 as a weight bit. And so when Commotion CNC gets to execute that, it knows to wait until this bit goes high. And so I have that configured to a button. So I change the wire, or sorry, not change the wire, I remove the wire, and then go press the button. And after I press the button, it would then move from here to here. And then when it gets to there, it knows to wait again until I've added the wire back onto the machine. And then I press the button again, and then it starts to cut. And then the same process repeats for each of these holes. And that was a key component uh, for getting this to work. Okay, it's set up now to, uh, to cut with the wire. I'm at the origin. I go load the other program, which will do a tool change. And then it should do the first thing it do is move to the center of the first hole. So I'll go do that and uh, bring it back when I'm feeding the wire through. Just finish the first rectangle. That's where I break the wire, so just have to do that. Let the tension off the wire first. Then I'll feed it back, and I believe it'll move to this hole here. Now I have to twist this one in my right hand at least five times so that as it undoes, it uh, does up the threads. It's kind of hard to see here if I let go of So now. Go. It's 
nice and tight. I uh, just rinse this off and take a look at the cut here. It's, uh, let's get this to focus here. Here's the start of the cut where I took the top off. It's looking pretty good. I don't really see any waviness or anything. There, so that's pretty, pretty nice. straight that is it's pretty good now I'll show you these in CAD I drew these as six inches in height so that's pretty much dead on six inches at least good enough for a tape measure accuracy Show you what it looks like on the other side here where it's sort of like the natural stone look so 
I kind of want to flip the stone up so I can get to the bottom of it. I want to drill holes in the bottom and add lights. So I did that. I got some one inch lights off of Amazon. And that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. What the? Oh, great got a new video. So glad I subscribed.